today we're going to do a watercolor sunset. This is my photo reference taken from my balcony just outside my window and a photo reference is meant to be a reference only. If you want an exact copy of the photograph then why not just blow up the photograph or have it printed on canvas or whatever. We're painting because we want to express ourselves and we want to create we want to have that meditative, wonderful feeling that we get when we're in tune with what we're doing. So we're not trying to copy a photograph. What I'm starting out with is a piece of watercolor paper that's on a watercolor block. I have done a drawing on it already and I have done a border around it. Now normally, this is a watercolor block, so it is glued together on all sides except for right here. And when it's finished and completely dry, I will use the palette knife under here to separate it from the other pages without disturbing the pages underneath. It's wonderful. The way I normally paint or often paint, this is another uh, painting that I did, I use masking tape and tape a paper to a board. That prevents buckling and eliminates the need for stretching. But um, I will give a lesson later on about stretching watercolor paper. Uh, if you use high quality, heavyweight, 140 pound or heavier watercolor paper, it's not always necessary to stretch it. For today, I'm using this watercolor block don't need to stretch it, and I've done a drawing on it. I'm using two light yellow, uh, a warm and a cool yellow, a warm and a cool red, and a warm and a cool blue this morning. I will be using uh, Lizarin Crimson, Permanent Red, that's a Da Vinci color, Lemon Yellow, New Gamboge, Ultramarine Blue, and Cobalt Blue. And my brushes, just three brushes, which I have described on the video. The first thing I'm doing is I'm using this lovely hockey brush to put water on the paper. I want this paper to be wet. This is Arches 140 pound paper. I want it wet so that the paint will flow on it. That's why we call it watercolor because it loves water. It's magic in water. I'm going mm, around the foreground. There's trees in the foreground here, but the sky will be evident through the trees. So wherever I put water, paint will flow. Wherever the paper is dry, the paint will stop. Isn't that magic? So many interesting things happen with watercolor and they're mostly surprises. <laughs> People think it's a hard medium to start with, but you do get surprises, I'll have to admit, and it's really hard to correct mistakes compared to, say, acrylics. But it's so easy to transport, it's cheap to get started with. You can start a watercolor painting and just leave it on a table for a few minutes. It'll be dry. And then you can Put it away. Unlike the setup and take down for acrylics or oils. I'm spraying my paints with water. I just put a little spray with a spray bottle and if you your paints had been put out a long time ago, three days ago and dried up, a spray of water will bring them back. The first thing I'm going to do is mix a little alizarin crimson, or not crimson, ultramarine blue, tiny bit, a tiny bit of thalo, 
Whoa, Thalo is just so intense. I'm painting uh, with this beautiful blue along the top and over towards the foreground I am leaving spaces where the clouds will be. And I think that's about it for the blue. Let me put a little, few little streaks in down here. I'm going to make a, a light pink here. Tiny touch of phthalo in here. Whoops, I put too much. I have to start again over here. Now I always use a piece of watercolor paper to test the color before I use it. That's almost the color that I want. Need a touch of yellow in there, just a little yellow. Too much yellow. more alizarin crimson. That's about what I want to know. When I want a lighter color, I just add more water to it. And in some places, I want the white of the paper to show through. If I feel the color is too dark, I will just add water. I'm going to use a tissue and blot some of this color out of here. As you see, it's running into the blue. I'm reclaiming some of the white this way, and I'm making a harder edge here. Amazing effects can be made just by using a Kleenex. And you have to remember it's going to dry lighter. You never know exactly what it's going to look like until it's dry. Allowing the colors to run together gives this wispy effect of the clouds. In a previous video, I showed how to create beautiful clouds just by taking out some of the color with a tissue, as I'm doing up here at the top. I'm going to clean my brush and put some of this beautiful lemon yellow in. I'm testing the yellow. Yeah, it's pretty. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> it's a very strong yellow. This is lemon yellow. And of course it will dry. And if you want it lighter, of course you add more water. Now I've touched my brush into the pink. That's a little much. 
If you have too much paint on your brush, you can always use a tissue. Take some of it off. The most amazing things happen with watercolor. But look at my picture. There's yellow and pink all blended together, and that's what I'm attempting to do here. Because I'm using a red to get this pink, I will get some oranges as soon as I run it through the yellow. So what I'm going to do is just run some colors into this watery mix, and I'll speed it up for you. Stay low and ultramarine and this red here. Look at that. It's like a black, beautiful color. It's not really a black, it's a deep purple. So when we use black by itself, like black paint right out of the tube, it looks flat. And so, try to use other colors. And this is pretty dark. 